Tucker. Hey. Hello, everyone. I'm Greg Gutfeld, along with Andrea Tanteros, Bob Beckel, Eric Bowling, and she once shot a butterfly for snoring. It's Dana Perino. This is The Five. The UN could be the worst thing ever to contain the letters U and N since untreated rabies. <laughs> Case in point, their climate chief says communism is tops at fighting global warming. Christiana Figueres claims that America's political differences prevents passing laws to fight rising temperatures. While in Kami, China, they actually want to breathe air that they don't have to look at. They're not doing this because they want to save the planet. They're doing it because it's in their national interest. Ah, translation, to get what we want, we need a dictator because then we can murder the dissenters. It's the same logic behind left-wing fantasies here and abroad. A dictator Obama could take our guns and make us watch PBS. Why not? So never mind that in China, the smog is thicker than Michael Moore's thighs. For with the UN, evidence is a drag, and so is history. Communism slayed in the 20th century, over 100 million dead, 65 million in China alone. They're the McDonald's of massacres. <laughs> but I get it. Think of how much less carbon is emitted when the emitters are reduced to crushed bone. Using this logic, all killers are environmental heroes. Genghis Khan becomes a tree hugger. And Hitler wrote the first inconvenient truth called Mein Kampf. Perhaps Ted Bundy was killing locally, but thinking globally. But look, the desire for someone or something to take over and fix things, even if millions die, it's not new. It's the nature of the left. If you wish to remake, you first must undo, which spells doom for me and for you. And that rhyme. I, I know, Andrea. I thought, hey, let's end on a rhyme because on Fridays, rhyming is fun. It this is, is fun. It's rhyming Friday. <laughs> It is rhyming Friday. So, so I mean, let's go to you first. Okay. Uh, what do you make of the UN suggestion? Kind of revolutionary, don't you think? <laughs> yes. Uh, so many people would love to live in China <laughs> where they control how many kids that you have. But this is about control. Mm -hmm. If you can control people's lives, mm -hmm. then you win, at right. least in the mind of a liberal. It's the same argument, too, when, and I laugh at it, when they come out and they say, you know, it, Fat people, if they would just all go away, if they would just die, we could fix the climate change issue. So then climate change, I guess, in their mind, if you're an anorexic, then you're also an environmental hero because then you're not eating any food. Mm -hmm. So no truck has to travel with the food that you can digest and blow a hole in the ozone. Um, MIT's Richard Linson, mm -hmm. he's making a lot of headlines. He's this famous professor. Um, I'm, he needs to get a food taster for what he's saying out in public. Um, he studied at Harvard. He studied at a lot of other schools. And he came out recently and he said, you know what? There just is not a lot to this catastrophic mm -hmm. um, argument that they're making. And if you look, he says, this is all about money. All the funding for this comes from the government. So they're doing this to keep their funding sources yeah. alive. And, and he is an expert. I mean, he spent his entire career st studying climate change. Yeah. Um, Bob, here's yes. the thing. Um, the debate is not between us. It's not over if man has an impact on the temperature. I happen to think it, it, they do, and you do too. But mm -hmm. the problem is, is with the exaggeration and, and uh, the inaccuracies in predicted models. Is that what leads to this kind of conclusion, let's go to communist China? Isn't well, that the I issue? Mean, the, the communist China thing is ridiculous. I mean, we just watched the a, a, a Olympics over there where they had to clear the streets off for about four weeks before they had to mm -hmm. clear the smog out of the streets. So, and China has a terrible, terrible uh, reputation on environmental issues. And uh, I mean, you know, we have, we have uh, some problems ourselves, but nothing compared to that. But having said that, this is, so we don't get into a big argument here. <laughs> NASA released their, uh, re, redid their report, right. which we've had this debate about, where 97% of climate scientists agree that the temperature is rising. <laughs> now, Eric, you can sit there and laugh, but you are you and a bunch a bunch of uh, flat earthers. people. No, I won't say flat earthers. I'm going to try to be nice about this. But when you talk about NASA, the American Medical Association, you go on down through all these lists of people who actually believe this is true, and it's the highest temperatures in the since temperatures have been recorded. You've got to say something's going on, don't you? It's not the highest. And it's, it's, well, it's, it's not a, the highest. That, that, except well, that, that study over that the past 130 years, the global average temperature has increased 1.4 percent. How old is the Earth? Yeah. Um, 
How old is yeah. the earth? Uh, hundreds of years. I don't know. I was here about the beginning, at the beginning. Hundreds of years, <laughs> thousands of years, or millions of years. Probably millions. Right. So you're going to go on, on a study that, yeah. that shows a minuscule increase in temperature over 130 years, which, by the way, it has gone up and it's going down. And right now, this snapshot not, in not, time. Not, not a minuscule It's increase. not 1.4%. Well, I'm no, trying to bring my research It's, it's with less me, than one degree is what it is over, 100, uh, over 100 and some yeah, years. Yeah, anyway, 1.4 degrees. Um, I, can, my yeah, son? go ahead. Uh, go for it. Uh, Communist China is ridiculous. Be Bob's right. Beijing Olympics, it was more like four or five months prior to the Olympics that people were not allowed to drive a car anywhere near the city of Beijing because of the smog problem. Um, it's also the reason why the U.S. doesn't get involved in things like Kyoto Protocol, mm -hmm. cap and trade, because China... The biggest polluters, the biggest emitters on the planet won't play ball. Mm -hmm. If we're going to go ahead and cut our pollution and, and, and make our, force our businesses like coal-fired power plants, which Obama wants to bankrupt, if we want to go ahead and put, put onerous regulations on them, and China's going to admit whatever the hell they want, right. it's one globe. It's, you know, as I said before, pollution is fungible, like money is fungible. If they're polluting in China, we're going to breathe it in mm -hmm. So what are you saying? Cleveland. If they're polluting in China, we should pollute here? No, I'm saying why should we be the only ones who adhere to, to put onerous regulations on our businesses uh, so it costs us more I to do business the and to power ones, our, our homes and, and plants well, when the, they're not doing it? We're the biggest economy in the world, and I think it probably makes sense for us to take the lead on this, don't you? No, I think the biggest polluter in the world, which is China, they should too. Well, well, I agree with you, but you can't force them to do it. Dana, uh, Obama, President Obama said that the climate is warming faster than ever, which is what uh, Bob just said. Um, it's a huge lie. Climate change predictions have, have been wildly exaggerated. I want to go show you this thought of an EPA administrator who can't actually say what's going on, uh, interviewed by uh, Jeff Ses Sessions, I believe is yeah. his name. Thank you. Somebody said yes, that's his name. Go ahead. Is that an accurate statement? Has it increased faster than predicted I or not, not? I do not know what the Senate is, I mean, the president's context was for making that. I do know that... Well, do you the believe the temperature has increased than faster than predicted? Decades. Do I not have the right to ask the director of EPA a simple question that's relevant to the discussion of what's before yep. us? Is the temperature around the globe increasing faster than was predicted even 10 years ago? I can't answer that question. The, the, the issue here is that nobody can really answer this question. Dana. But they all, yeah, nobody can answer the, that question. Yeah. But they all know the answer. Right. That's okay. A, yes. So the, the answer is climate climate change. Yes. Global warming. Yes. More money for it. Yes. It, the, 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 actually, the, the answer to climate change or any other energy issue is not communism. It yes. is the private sector and capitalism because mm -hmm. the only way to grow yourself out of this is to have a lot of economic growth where you have companies or governments that have enough money in their treasury mm -hmm. to be able to pay and fund for new projects that will actually be scalable, mm -hmm. that will actually work so that you could replace coal and oil. You can't actually do that now, but the, so the best thing is actually to get America back to work just so that we have more money in our own pockets so that companies can invest appropriately. Mm. Well, it took the government, you know, to get the Clean Air and Clean Water Act to get these corporations to clean up their act. If we mm. leave it up to the free but enterprise see, who system who created the EPA? It was Richard Nixon, but that, leaving that aside... I thought he was evil. He did not, he did not pass the Clean Water and Clean Air Act, which, by the way, Every, but never mind, I won't get into this, how the Republicans have been attacking that, but because uh, all it's going to do is get another big argument. But the fact of the matter is, anybody who denies that this country has polluted and has taken massive steps to correct a lot of that, and that we have coal fire plants that are good for us when they're polluting the atmosphere. No, actually, clean, clean coal, coal fired power plants have done an amazing job of getting new technologies in there to be able to scrub out as much as they possibly can. It's not entirely risk free, but they've done a ton, not just because of the government telling them to do so, because it makes good business sense for them. So, again, I go back to the private sector is the better answer than communism. Well, what we ought to, to have, all is, these what we ought have is nuclear power. That would be the best thing we could do. Could I just make a point about Gina McCarthy, the woman that we just saw? She was at a hearing in November and was asked about the Keystone Pipeline and gave a very similar answer to the one that right. she just gave. She was hammered. Why is this bad for the environment? And she couldn't answer it. In fact, she sounded more like an advocate for the Keystone Pipeline. And this is Obama's own person over at the EPA, short on answers on why we shouldn't develop our own oil right here at home. Does anybody know how much oil that the Keystone... I'm not arguing. 700,000 barrels yes. a day. A day? <laughs> yeah. Per day? Yeah. Well, and, and, and I'm sorry, Dan, but part of the problem, Keith Ellison, Representative Ellison, was on 
the other network this morning. I was listening to them, and, and they were talking about certain things. And Ellison said, no, definitely not the Keystone Pipeline. And I'm waiting. One of those idiots would say, well, why, why? why not? Just, yeah. just ask yes. the damn question, and no one could do it <laughs> do because it. there's no answer. Yeah. There's yeah. no why not. He's talking about creating jobs. He said, well, definitely not with this Keystone. Just why? Also yeah, why? for safety, because earlier this week there was a big report and a lot of uh, news articles about the hazards of moving all of this energy by rail. Right. If you had Keystone Pipeline, that's actually a safer way to do that, but mm -hmm. that doesn't enter into their equation. Well, you're still going to move by rail, though, right? I mean, you're still going to haul. Not as you. far. Okay. I have a feeling that this topic is now over. Dead. When we start, when we start to talk about Why how did you oil get into is this moved. topic, by the way. I didn't. They told me to do it. No, they didn't. Anyway, I love climate change. Next on the phone.